Welcome to the Minarch Standard Design Refuge Chamber Induction video. I'm Brad Whitaker, the Service Manager for Minarch Systems. The components covered in this video are integral to the overall use of a refuge chamber to ensure the occupants stay safe in an emergency. By the end of this video, you'll know what a refuge chamber is as well as the three key considerations when dealing with an enclosed environment. First of all, what is a refuge chamber? A refuge chamber is a safe place that can support life without air or power for a designated period of time. The WA guidelines recommend that refuge chambers are located no more than 750 metres from where work is occurring, but this can change depending on surrounding hazards or active working areas. Each refuge chamber has an identifying number located on the front of the chamber, typically starting with MA. In this instance, we have chamber MA1421. This is helpful to know if you're ever contacting us here at Minarch, as it helps us locate the chamber's build records. Each chamber is purpose designed to fit a predetermined amount of occupants, usually between 8 and 26 persons. You can determine a refuge chamber's occupancy rating by referring to the sticker on the front of the refuge chamber, or by counting the seats inside. In emergency situations, refuge chambers can accommodate more people, however this will decrease the operating time. There are strobe lights and sirens on the front, allowing the unit to be found in low visibility situations. When the green light is flashing, it means you're running on mains power. When the red light is flashing, it means the chamber is relying on its battery backup system. If both lights are flashing, it means that there's an electrical fault and it requires immediate attention. From inside the refuge chamber, the siren can be operated manually. This refuge chamber is equipped with a UPS battery backup system, which stands for uninterruptible power supply. If the power is lost in an emergency, the refuge chamber will automatically switch over to the UPS battery backup system. If the power is to come back later on, the unit would then automatically switch back onto mains power. Now let's take a look inside the refuge chamber. Now that we've made our way inside the refuge chamber, I'm going to point out some of the main components before going into further detail. We have the filtered mine air coming into the chamber, the air conditioner, scrubbing system, aura effects gas monitoring, escape hatch in the instance your chamber door is blocked, seating with space for PPE to be stored, chemical cartridges, oxygen cylinders, main controller which shows you which mode the chamber is in and whether you're using mains or battery power. Another system that has been incorporated into this particular controller is the Ivan system. Ivan features a motion sensor which will pick you up as you enter and automatically begin giving you a voice prompt to help guide you through how to use this refuge chamber. You have entered a Minarch refuge chamber. If this is an emergency, press the select button. Perhaps most importantly, we have our operating procedures on the wall, which is a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to use the refuge chamber in an emergency. This information can also be found in greater detail in the operations manual, usually located in the cupboard next to the scrubber. Right, so now onto an overview of how a refuge chamber works. There are three things to consider when dealing with an enclosed environment for an extended period of time. What you're breathing, how you're monitoring what you're breathing, and how you're controlling your temperature. First things first, let's talk about what you'll be breathing when you're inside the refuge chamber. There are three sources of oxygen supply within a refuge chamber, the first being your compressed air. Thanks to the chamber's four-stage filtration system, we are able to remove excess fumes, oils and dirt particles from the incoming compressed air. With the ability to isolate from within the refuge chamber should the air become compromised with carbon monoxide or other dangerous gases. If the air does become compromised, you will turn to your secondary source of oxygen, your oxygen cylinders. These are usually designed to provide you with 36 hours of oxygen supply, however more can be stocked to provide a longer duration period. And then following this, a third source of oxygen is available to supplement this duration in the form of an oxygen candle. So now that we know what the three primary sources of oxygen are, we need to be monitoring our breathable air so we're aware of when to move on to the next source. 
In an enclosed space, gas levels can rise or fall to dangerous levels, so we need a way to control them. To do this, we have Monarch's purpose-developed Aura Effects gas monitoring system, which you'll find in all new refuge chambers. As standard, the Aura Effects unit will measure the temperature, your oxygen levels, and both carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide levels, with the capability to measure up to 11 other gases if needed. When gases reach unacceptable levels, the Aura Effects will alarm and give voice prompts on how to maintain acceptable levels. Depending on site preference or the age of your refuge chamber, you may find that your refuge chamber has a different type of gas monitoring. There are manual gas testing tubes which look like this, with different tubes for each three types of gas tested. Another common type of gas monitoring device is the digital gas monitor, which will alarm when gas levels reach outside of acceptable levels. So now that we know how these gas levels are monitored, we need to learn how to control them. In the instance that mine air is isolated from the refuge chamber, through mine air failure, or if the CAMS unit registers low oxygen levels from within the compressed air. Clean fresh air will no longer be available to the refuge chamber, so it's time to start recycling the air within the refuge chamber. We do this by using absorption chemicals and call this process scrubbing. This scrubbing process is conducted by the scrubber system. Chemical cartridges are found in each refuge chamber, with the quantity of cartridges supplied specific to the chamber occupancy. Here we have the Markazorb CO, which is the carbon monoxide absorption chemical, and the Markazorb CO2, which is the carbon dioxide absorption chemical. These chemical cartridges have been designed for ease of use and are vibration packed to ensure maximum efficiency and chemical absorption. Once air has been scrubbed, chamber occupants are left with empty air, which is then supplemented with oxygen from the oxygen cylinders. The final key point to be aware of is controlling the temperature of your refuge chamber, as heat stress is a very real threat. When a chamber is occupied and powered by the battery backup system, the air conditioning should be turned on and set to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. This will ensure you are conserving your battery backup system. We've now covered the integral aspects of a refuge chamber and the three key considerations, which are what you're breathing, how you're monitoring your air, and how you're controlling the temperature of your environment. We hope you have a better idea of what a refuge chamber is and how it's designed to help you in an emergency. We invite you to now watch the MineSafe Standard Design Operating Procedure video on MineArc's YouTube channel for information on how to operate a refuge chamber. Of course, you can always contact us to organise face-to-face -face training or for any additional information. Thank you for your time today and remember to like and subscribe to get more great content from MineArc Systems.